Hello, hello, it's Monica from Crafting with Queen Lady and I hope you have an absolutely fabulous day. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a crown using edgeable cutting dice from your stash. First, we need a three card, and this one is Centripel from Crafter's Companion. It is pretty thick and it has that beautiful shine to it. I'm going to use a Dawning Lace cutting die from Rose Garden Collection from Crafter's Companion. And I'm going to place it exactly at the top, in the middle, just to make sure the die doesn't move when I put it through a die cutting machine. I'm going to use low tack tape on both the edges here. And then I decided to use Opulent Edge cutting die from Vintage Butterflies Collection as well and I'm going to use it on the left and on the right side here. As you can see, there is a gap in between those cutting dies, and I'm also going to move it slightly to the left-hand side. I'm going to use my low tack tape again, so the die won't move when I put it through my Gemini cutting machine. And when this is ready, I'm also going to put that die on the right-hand side, again leaving that gap, and I'm also going to trim the cut slightly so it goes through my Gemini cutting machine. Now, when this is ready, as you can see, it looks like this. It doesn't look like a crown yet. So all we have to do, first we're going to cut the edges. And at this point, I thought let's use a cutting mat and a craft knife. So I'm going to create a curve here to match those elements together. So we can always do a straight line first and then a curve. When this is cut, it looks amazing, right? So if you have any of the edgeable cutting dice, you can create any crowns you want. And I do encourage you to play with whatever you've got. Now, when this is ready, I'm also going to trim that end as well, because it's not very even. So I thought, just to make sure it's evenly spaced with all the other elements on my crown, I'm going to use my ruler with a blade, and I got it from the wax many years ago, and I love it. It is perfect with any cutting mat underneath. But if it doesn't cut first time, all you have to do, literally, to go again. And as you can see, I'm actually using that ruler for the length of the crown. And this is perfect because I'm going to cut all the other elements with that ruler. And all the elements will be exactly the same size. Super cool, right? Now, when this is ready, I've got another piece of that central pearl card. I'm going to use my ruler to cut that element out. To be honest, in the end, I needed three of those to decorate the whole crown. And when these elements are ready, it will be time to make some adjustments if you need. But also, we're going to add a little bit of color. And that will make that crown even more special. Have you ever created any costume pieces for any play? Because this project was created for a play in my school. And we had Midsummer's Night Dream. And if you can guess who was wearing the crown, please let me know in the comments down below. Now I've got a scrap piece of paper and I'm going to use one of my totally favorite paints ever. And this one comes from PBO and it's metallic gold. It is literally pure gold. I love it. And it always gives that beautiful shine. So what I'm going to do here, literally, I'm just going to paint my card. And this way, it will look like proper crown with a gold color. If you've never ever painted any card, yes, you can do it. So don't be afraid. Use anything that you've got in your stash. I'm pretty sure if you do have any sprays, that will work as well. And it's always a good idea to leave that cut to dry a little bit before you move on to the next step. So when this is ready, I'm also going to paint all the other elements as well. So now we've got the side panels. And yes, I'm going to paint them as well. With some of them, you don't really have to paint all the elements. Because inside of the crown, we can leave white. They really wanted all the elements to match. And there is a trick how to make this crown to actually last longer time. And I'm going to show you that trick because why not? Because if you only use card, it won't be very durable. 
but there is always a way to make it even better, right? So as you can see, when I paint those elements here, I'm going to leave them to dry for a couple of minutes and with acrylic paint, it takes about, I don't know, five to 10 minutes. So you don't really have to wait long. All you have to do later on is to decorate your crown. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to use as well. So when these elements are ready, it will be time to move on to the next step. But as you can see, I've got one more element here. And this is actually to hide something that it's going to be inside of the crown to make it more steady and durable. So, as you can see, I'm using that gold paint and it has that amazing shine to it. And when you tilt the card in light, it is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And I can tell you that during the play, it was amazing. The crowns looked beautiful. So this is part one video. And next Monday, I'm going to have part two video with a different crown. And then in part two video, I'm also going to show you some images of the props I created for the play as well. So stay tuned for that video. You definitely don't want to miss it. As you can see, now I'm painting the other side of the crown because we are going to see it. And this is always a good tip for you. If you want your projects to look professionally finished, yes, use that time and actually paint the other side as well. So if you do have any of the edgeable cutting dice, please let me know which one is your favorite. Which one do you use the most? Now it will be time to put that to the side and clean the paintbrush straight away. I measured one of the heads of the students in my school and I used it as a guide to create my crown. So as you can see, I'm literally just wrapping around that element I created at school. And this is super easy. All you need now to make it more steady is to use a piece of cardboard. And this one comes from Crafters Companion packaging. It is perfect. It is long enough. But what you have to do first, cut the label off. And then, just to make sure it's going to have that beautiful curve to it, all you have to do is literally use your fingers to create that curve. And this way, your crown will look like a real crown and it will be more steady and durable. And I'm also going to show you how to hide that cardboard. It is super simple to do. Now, when this is ready, I'm going to adhere that cardboard inside of the crown. And I'm going to use my one and only liquid glue, magic glue. If you want, you can also use hot glue gun. But to be honest, it dries too quickly. So sometimes you don't really get that curve. So I do encourage you to use liquid glue for this part. Trust me, I know it, because I tried to use glue gun with some of the other elements and I wasn't very happy with the result. Of course, you can use it for speed if you want, but if you want your project to look very beautiful, this is the trick. And as you can see, I'm also creating that curve again. And this is crucial because someone is going to wear that crown in the end. And as I told you, this is for Midsummer's Night Dream. And if you would like to guess who is going to wear it, please let me know of the name of the character in the play. Here, I'm going to measure the end of that cupboard. And yes, I'm not going to adhere it yet because I need to measure it on the head of one of the students taking part in the play. So now I've got that another gold panel. And again, I'm going to create that curve. And this is the way to hide that cardboard. All you have to do at the moment is to make a curve and then use your liquid glue to adhere those panels together. Super quick and simple. So if you've never ever created a crown for any costume or play, maybe today I inspire you because it was so much fun to create. So now I can put in my CV that I'm a crown designer. This is super cool, right? So yes, use whatever is in your stash and trust me, you can always use and stretch your supplies to create amazing projects. 
Whenever you use liquid glue, I do encourage you to make sure the glue is set before you move on to the next step. So, when this is ready, we have to decorate the front of a card, right? But with those elements at the back, don't worry, because you can add more gold panels later on. So here, I decided to use some feathers, and all of these, including the pearls you're going to see and gems later on, come from Amazon. And all the names of the products I will try to leave in the description down below, so if you're interested, yes, you can check them out. So as you can see, these feathers are pretty dark, but I really like how they create a contrast with that gold paint. So I'm going to use my hot blue to put them inside of the crown. And we actually created those pockets here with the cardboard and gold card. So it is so much easier to put the feathers inside. So yes, you can use that trick as well. And it's always a good idea to actually add a drop of glue at the top as well, because this way the feathers will be adhered properly and they won't move. So yes, you can use any edible dice to create a crown, but then put a tiny bit of glue at the top as well. And if you put too much glue here, you can always use a pokey tool to actually scrape the glue as well and that will be perfectly fine so when these feathers are ready i thought it looks a little bit empty so all i have to do now i'm also going to add more feathers and as you can see i'm trying to use that symmetry pattern on the crown if you like it please let me know in the comments down below. So now it is time to add some more colorful feathers. And again, I decided to go with some blues, a little bit of purple as well, because that will give me beautiful contrast as well, especially with those darker and lighter feathers. And again, I'm going to use my cod glue to adhere all those elements on the crown often use feathers in your projects. If you do have your favorite project to create with feathers, I would absolutely love to know what it is. So please let me know in the comments down below. And here I decided to use that symmetry trick again. So I'm starting with the middle of my crown. I'm adding few drops at the top, so this way all the feathers will be adhered there and they won't move. And that's exactly what I wanted. So as you can see, I'm going to decorate the crown first with all the feathers. And then later on, I'm also going to add some pearls and gems. And when these are totally set, I can add that gold element at the back. And it's always a good idea to measure someone's head first. But if you can't do it, or if that crown is going to be worn by more people, all you can do is to actually create that gold element at the back, then actually use your scissors to cut the crown in the middle at the back, and then use some stretched elastics. And that's exactly what I did here. It's not in the video, because I had to do it at school to measure the kids' heads. But it is super trick for you. Literally, all you have to do is to cut the end or the back of the crown, and then add some elastic with hot glue and then put some more gold cut as well. So this way the crown can stretch a little bit, which is super, super cool, right? So when all those feathers are ready, I was very pleased with the result and how they look like on a crown. And what do you think about this? Do you like it? I really hope you do. So now it is time for my favorite part. So I'm going to use some pearls and gems, but we also have to adhere that crown to the glass mat because it will move and move. And that's not what I want when I put all those embellishments on it. So just use a little bit of low tech tape and then you can play with any pearls or gems from your stash. And here, those ones come from Amazon as well. And as I told you, all the names of the products, you can check in the description down below. And especially with the gems, you can also use your pokey tool to maneuver those elements. 
And again, I decided to go with that symmetry here as well. And I think it works so well, especially for the crowns. If you do have your favorite crown that you've seen, please let me know which one is it. You can also see Queen Victoria's crown at Victorian Albert Museum. It is so beautiful. So if you do have your favorite, please let me know in the comments down below. So as you can see here, the gems will look amazing. Trust me, on the stage, when I was watching the play, I was really amazed how much light they can catch. It was absolutely amazing. And with that gold Kibio paint, literally it is my totally favorite, favorite one when it comes to metallic paint. Not only it gives you that shine effect, but also it catches the light amazingly. Now it is time to add some pearls on the crown. And as you can see, there is one at the top, then middle point. And I also wanted to decorate those elements here, especially at the top and the bottom as well. So as you can see, with all those pearls in that flower box, you have lots of different shapes, but also sizes, which means you can play with them. And I absolutely love how it turned out in the end. And when you use liquid glue, you do have time to maneuver them. So if you get a wrong pearl, it is super easy to fix. And when these elements are ready, you can also use your pokey tool to move them around. And I really like it. And to be honest, the crowns looks amazing. So if you want to see part two video of this project, stay tuned and subscribe to my channel because next Monday I'm going to have that video for you. So now it is time to decorate the bottom of a crown and it is nearly complete. So what do you think about this project? Do you like it? Would you like to give it a go? If you do have your edgeable cutting dice, please try to create something different that cut. You'll be absolutely amazed. So here you can add more gold part here and as I told you if you want to stretch your crown you can use those elastics as well. So I really really want you will give that project a go. It is so much fun to create and you can use it for so many different occasions right? Thank you so much for watching and spending that time with me. Don't forget to like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you haven't already, I really hope you'll feel inspired and create something beautiful and stunning today. Happy crafting!